into the 2020-2021 Conejo Valley Unified School District's Focus on the Arts program. This exciting arts adventure is funded by two grants from generous partners, including Access Arts, an initiative of TO Arts, along with Conejo Schools Foundation. Have fun, and remember, you can work at your own pace. Don't forget to use that pause button. And this is family fun for the whole family, so gather everyone around and you can all work together. And if you don't have the materials, you can improvise. That means use what you got. And no matter what, remember, even though we're apart, we're connected by art. Hi, I'm Julie with Art Makes You Smart, and we are so excited to be here with you today. And I'm Anu. We're gonna do some really fun projects today. We're gonna to learn about Native American blankets, headdresses, and symbols. But most importantly, we're gonna learn about Native American artist, Betty Albert. Check out this video. Betty Albert is a Canadian artist of Native American heritage from the Cree Nation. She creates beautiful scenes in acrylic paint. Oftentimes, the scene includes a figure standing wrapped in a blanket which is the inspiration for our blanket project. She also uses Native American symbols or symbolism in her paintings. Betty's Native American name is Waba Miguel, which means white feather and represents peace. You will see white feathers incorporated into her art. Oftentimes, she sets a scene with a sun or a moon in the background Nature is a big part of her artwork, which makes sense as nature plays a very important role in Native American culture. Here we see a figure standing, looking to the moon. What do you think she is thinking about? Can you find the star in the distance? An evening star symbolizes direction, possibly like direction moving forward in your life. Do you see four major points of the star? These represent a compass. Birds flying symbolize freedom and moving forward as well. Betty Albert paints her dreams and she wants her paintings to give a peaceful feeling to the viewer. In this painting named Transformation, we see dragonflies surrounding this figure. They are also present in the blanket, which the woman is wrapped. Dragonflies appear in people's dreams to remind them to bring joy and happiness to their lives. There is a Cree legend about how wolves became the first dogs. A wolf appeared as a Cree man was hunting buffalo, and the wolf spoke to the man. He told him to use his bow and arrow, and only his bow and arrow when hunting the herd. And then the wolf disappeared. The man's family was starving, and the wolf wanted to protect and help them. However, the bow and arrow the wolf provided were very small and weak. As the herd approached, the man used the wolf's arrow and killed six of the seven buffalo. For the seventh buffalo, he used his own bow and arrow, much bigger and stronger, but the buffalo escaped. When the wolf returned, he asked the man, how he had fared in his hunting. The Cree man told him of the escaping buffalo. The wolf said, I told you to use mine. Well, we have enough food, so it is okay. The man and the wolf and the pack returned to the family. They shared in the buffalo, giving the wolves raw meat and bones. From then on, the wolf stayed with the family, offering protection and companionship. They are said to be the first dogs. Here we see Betty Albert just using a face 
and not the typical figures we have seen before. This makes for a very bold and interesting look. Eagle feathers can be a symbol for wisdom, like someone who has aged and lived much life. You can see here the person holding the eagle feathers in their lap. These final pieces here are a great example of how to use the Native American blanket and art. The blankets help to show a scene, one that has crisp, cool evening air, but yet a feeling of warmth and protection is offered by the blankets. Betty Albert's art has a way of conveying feeling through her amazing use of color and symbolism. It is a beautiful tribute to Native American culture. Wow, that was so inspiring. Let's learn a little bit more about Native American blankets, headdresses, and symbols. Native American headwear, blankets, and symbols. Let's start with taking a look at headdresses, roaches, and basket hats. Oftentimes when we think about a Native American headdress, we imagine something like what this gentleman is wearing here. While some Native American tribes use this type of headdress, it is in fact not the most commonly used type of headwear for Native Americans. The feathered headdress has an interesting history. The Great Plains regional tribes such as Sioux, Crow, Blackfoot, Cheyenne, and Plains Cree are the ones who use this type of headdress, which is actually called a war bonnet. This straight up style shown here was used by the Blackfoot tribe. War bonnets were used in ceremonies and only worn by chiefs and warriors, and mainly by men. However, female Sioux warrior Minnie Hollywood is wearing a halo style, as shown on the right. Warriors earned feathers for acts of bravery and they collected them over time to eventually make their war bonnets. The feathers were always from the golden eagle and sometimes kept on a staff, which is like a long walking stick. War bonnets are very important to those who wear them and should not be worn by anyone but them. To make one, men would group together to help a warrior construct his, which could take a considerable amount of time and was done carefully. Once a warrior had collected three feathers, they were able to start a war bonnet. Can you imagine earning all the feathers as seen on the trailing headdress shown on the right? The most common type of headdress worn east of the Rocky Mountains in the United States was this type called a roach or a porcupine roach. They are made of stiff animal hair, such as porcupine, moose, and deer tail, and are attached to a bone hair ornament or a leather base. They are styled to stand straight up. Roaches are worn by warriors, but also by dancers. Typically, they do not have as much importance spiritually as war bonnets, and depending on the tribe, were worn and are still worn today for sporting events. Basket hats were common west of the Rocky Mountains. Different tribes made basket hats, and they were worn by men, women, and girls. The Southern Paiute are exceptional basket weavers. Their baskets are not only hats, but functional baskets for carrying water and can even be used for cooking. These Haida basket hats convey information about a person's clan, achievements, or status within the tribe. The symbols you see here are painted on a basket hat made from spruce root. The plateau tribes of California, such as the Yurok, made basket hats normally worn by women and girls, and the designs were decorative. While they were worn to keep hair back from the face, they also used their hats to collect berries and roots, and also water. Hats and basket weaving are still important 
in this tribe to this day. The hats of the Tlingit of the Pacific Northwest varied. This one here is styled after a Russian sailor hat. The Tlingit live in Alaska and have had many interactions with Russians. This portrait of Chief McKenna shows him wearing a symbolic basket hat. It is a whaling hat. In fact, it is the very hat shown here. It tells about the relationship between the chief and his whaling captain, the person who led the hunt for whales. Blankets are very important to the livelihood of Native Americans, even to this day. Let's take a look. The Navajo are most known for the blankets and rugs, which you can see being woven here. They are known for their bold geometric designs, but many tribes, if not all tribes, use blankets as shown on this Apache woman here. Blankets are used for welcoming newborns. They're used in ceremonies and dances, wrapping the dead, and of course for keeping warm and keeping house, such as for curtains or a simple door. Beautiful blankets known for their symbols and designs were very important for trading, but are still important today as an art form and as a way to make money. These shown here can take up to two years to create and are woven from goat's wool and cedar bark. Native Americans traded their blankets, but also traded items for blankets. Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce tribe is honored with this blanket, which is actually produced by a company known for their work in wool called Pendleton. Pendleton made blankets for tribes by actually sending their designers to live with the various tribes for months and learning what was important to them. This blanket here symbolizes bravery as Chief Joseph was known for protecting his people. The arrowheads in the design symbolize courage and strength. As we have seen, symbols were used in the hats and blankets, but symbols were actually used by Native Americans everywhere. Symbols have multiple meanings and could be used to tell a story, to give directions, or to honor someone. In the upcoming art projects, you can incorporate symbols into your artwork. So let's take a peek at just a few symbols now. These symbols here are just a few that are taken from animals. We saw the eagle feather in headdresses and in Betty Albert's artwork. It represents wisdom like an elder tribesman would possess. We also saw the dragonfly, a symbol for happiness and speed, like for a warrior. Everyday life symbols were helpful. Today you can still see symbols that were painted and carved in caves, on rocks, and in dwelling, dwellings and cliffs. They were used as a form of communication for those traveling. These symbols here all offer a type of protection, whether from a higher power, the protection that motherly love provides, or the protection from the sun, which is needed to grow food. Arrows can be shown multiple ways to indicate all kinds of things like friendship, indicated by two arrows crossed. Nature symbols, such as rain and lightning, have obvious purposes, but also represent plentiful crops or speed and power. Balance between all things, humans, animals, and plants, is important to all Native American tribes and should be noted as a very important symbol. Let's create some art inspired by all these things we have learned here. That was great. Thanks, Julie. And now that you guys are all experts on Native American culture and symbols, we're ready to get started on some great artwork. Native American Hats and Headdresses Art Project. First, gather these supplies. A six or nine inch paper plate, a 9 by 12 piece of construction paper, any color will do, watercolors, brush, and a cup of water, scissors, and markers. It's time to get creative. 
we will paint a paper plate and turn it into a headdress or hat. And then we will add symbols and marker. Okay, let's get started. We will be creating a custom made color as the first step. To do that, add water to your watercolor tray or the lid of your watercolors. You can use your brush to add a little bit of water to the lid. Then add yellow paint to the water in the tray. And then just a little bit of brown. Then mix the yellow and the brown. This should make a nice pale brown skin color. Keep blending until you get the colors you want. Use this color to paint the bottom of the plate, just the center of the plate, not the outer ring. You may need to make more of the custom color to fill the whole area. Now you can paint the outer ring with any colors you like. You can even try mixing new colors in your paint lid and then paint sections of various colors like we have here. Add hair to the center face color. It is easy if you paint a pointed oval shape. Then paint a second pointed oval shape like we did here. Now for some fun. Cut the face out from the center ring. Now cut the ring into pieces. To get creative with your shapes, you can cut all kinds of different things. This will be what you use to create the headdresser hat. You can cut pieces that are short, you can cut pieces that are long, and you can cut pieces into more pieces. Look at the long wavy piece we made. That would be great to make a headband. Lay out the pieces you've cut and create a design for a hat or a headdress. Have fun laying out your pieces. Try a few different designs. Once you've decided on a design, glue it down. Add symbols like the ones you just learned about onto your headband or anywhere else you like. Great job. Now sign your name. In this next project, we're going to create another headdress, but this time we're going to use a side view, which is also called a profile view. Native American hats and headdresses with profile art project. First, gather these supplies, a six or nine inch paper plate, a nine by 12 piece of construction paper, any color, watercolors, brush and a cup of water, markers, scissors, and a pencil. It's time to get creative. We will paint a paper plate and turn it into a headdress or hat, and then we will add symbols and marker. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to draw the profile, which is known as the side view of the face. We will be doing this on the center circle of the plate. Turn your plate so it is bottom side up. Find the center circle of your plate. It should look a little different than the edge of the plate. Now with your pencil, draw an arc, a curved line, from the bottom of the center circle to the top of the center circle. Do this about one inch or so in from the edge. Draw another arcing line as shown with the pencil for the hairline. About halfway on the profile line, draw a nose, add two bumps for lips, and one bump for a chin. Don't worry too much about these features. They will look great when you are all done. 
Now erase the lines on the nose, mouth, and chin that you don't want. Okay, time to watercolor. First, we need to make a good skin color. To do that, use your brush to add some water to the lid of your watercolors. That's what the lid is good for, mixing custom colors. Now add a fair amount of yellow to the water. To make pale brown skin color, you can mix the yellow and a smaller amount of brown. Now paint the center circle of the plate with the skin color you just made. You may need to make a little more of the skin color to fill the whole circle. Add black for hair. Now paint the outer ring with all kinds of colors. Create multiple sections of different colors or make some of your own new colors in the lid. Add patterns if you like with your watercolors. Cut the center circle out from the ring. Cut out the profile. Now glue that profile down on your construction paper. Put it off to one side and down low so that you can leave room for the headdress or hat that you will be making. Now cut the ring of the plate into several pieces. Make the pieces all different sizes and all different shapes. Make some pieces long and wavy. Make some pieces short and angular. Have fun cutting out all kinds of different shapes. Now lay out your pieces and play around with them. You don't have to use all of the pieces. Or you can use every single piece. Once you have the pieces where you like them, glue them down. Now use markers to draw symbols. Use some of the ones you just learned about. And of course, don't forget to sign your name. Well done. In this final project, we'll be creating a figure wearing a blanket with Native American symbols. It's a project that's truly inspired by the work of Betty Albert. Native American Blanket Art Project. You will need these supplies. 12 by 18 construction paper in white and blue. A pencil, markers, scissors, and glue. Here are some project ideas. You will be surprised how easy it is to draw this figure. Then it will be time to get creative with your own blanket designs. Okay, let's get started. First start by using a pencil and draw three lines like we have here to make four equal sections on your white construction paper. They don't have to be perfectly equal. Just get them close. Then draw a tall rectangle to the top line. This is going to be the width of your figure, so don't make it too wide. You want to leave room for the blanket on the right side of the paper. Draw a neck and head in the top section. Almost go to the top of the page, but not quite to leave room for hair or maybe you might want to add feathers in the hair as well. To draw the arm, we just need a rectangle on an angle. So start it at the top corner of the tall rectangle and finish as shown here. Draw the blanket hanging from the arm like this. Start at the arrows shown, then draw a swooping line all the way down to the bottom line or so. Now make the blanket look more like a blanket by softening the lines. Look at the lines we have drawn in red here. Like a wavy line along the edge of the blanket looks very natural. And very importantly, soften the shoulder line by drawing a curved line here at the shoulder. 
Now for some simple details to finish off the figure. To create hair, first draw a cap off to the side as shown. For a braid, draw two wavy lines, or you can draw a ponytail or whatever you like for hair. And then add just a simple nose for the profile. If you'd like to make pants, draw a line dividing the bottom section. For a skirt, just outline with some flowing lines. To make a simple upwards facing hand, follow the simple steps here. Erase any unwanted lines and now go over all the keeper lines with a black or dark marker. Now you have an empty blanket to fill in with symbols. Make some of your symbols very large to help fill the space. You will be coloring the symbols with marker, so be sure to make them large enough and open enough so you can color them in. Here are some reminder symbols to help you create your blanket, such as eagle feathers, cactus and dragonfly, balance with the sun and moon, arrows and the many different ways you can draw them, the turtle, and the eye of wisdom and protection, wavy lines for water, day and night dots, lightning for speed, teepees, the sun, or could be used as a compass, friendship arrows that are crossed, and rain. Once you have your designs drawn, outline them and fill them in with color. Don't forget to color in the whole figure as well. With the extra paper you have left, you could create a white moon or color it in as a sun. Cut everything out, glue it down, and sign your name. Well done.